club offering. Welcome to church. What a beautiful weather to praise the Lord. How about that? Can we give him another big club offering? What a great day to be in church. Can we celebrate our God this morning? Hallelujah. 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 You're not helping this morning. Hallelujah. Can we rejoice and celebrate our King? Hallelujah. 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 He says, come into his presence with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye peoples. Do you have a voice this morning? Is your voice working? Are your hands working? Can you lift them up and shout hallelujah? Can you jump on your feet and shout hallelujah? Jesus. Before you sit down, please welcome someone to church this morning. I know we have a lot of people online. If you're online, you're welcome to church as well. The daddies and mommy in the precious toddler corner, you're welcome to church. We see you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate the gift of God in the house? J Tribe, our amazing instrumentalist, the technical team. God bless you all. God bless you all. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you welcome your neighbor already? You did? Do it one more time with a smile. As you take your seat in the presence of the Lord. If your neighbor is not smiling, you, you didn't get the assignment. If your neighbor is still not smiling, ah, you, you didn't. Uh, mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's a wonderful day to be in church. Great to see everyone this morning. We are honored, we are blessed, we are privileged to have a servant of God in the house today. I will read his bio and then I will tell you about him because I know him a little bit. I've known him for some time now. Um, Dr. Lufemi Oderinlo is a passionate teacher of the word and a composer who has served in many leadership roles in various ministries. He is presently a pastor with Word of Life Ministries, also known as the Stone Church Lagos. A surgeon by training and a teacher by calling. I just paused for your reaction. <laughs> a surgeon by calling, by training, teacher by calling. You are just a nurse, so you, are, you, are not, you don't have time to serve God again. Can we celebrate the gift of God? <laughs> Hallelujah. He has taught the scriptures in many conferences with an unusual depth of insight. He's the author of seven laws of scripture interpretation and the mystery of fatherhood among other life-changing Christian books. He has composed many songs including Holy Fire, Jesus I Love Your Name. I thought J. Trabu responded to that. He composes songs as well. <laughs> and Momokbe Miwa. He lives in Lagos State, Nigeria, and is married to Taiwo. His marriage to Taiwo is blessed with three children. Now, that's his bio. Let, let me give you my, my version of this. I met Dr. Derilo many years ago because he's my mother's doctor. What do you call doctors who are surgeons for the eyes? Ophthalmologists. Is there like a senior term, a bigger term? And we, we have in our midst today a giant in the marketplace. He looks very humble. But his fame precedes him, not just in Nigeria, several countries. My mom was telling me even when she talked to her doctor in South Africa, he was talking about Dr. Darren Lowe. Can we celebrate the gift of God? But, you know, more, more importantly for me, and I say this all the time, that God is raising kings and priests. Because he has raised us up not only to know how to speak in tongues, 
but also to sit on boards and take charge in the marketplace. Amen. So I am really honored that one of the greatest ophthalmologists of our time in Nigeria is also a pastor, also composes songs, also writes books, also serves the Lord. Can you nudge your neighbor and say, what's your excuse? Eh, what's your excuse? See, I'm really busy. Oh. I'm, I'm very busy, you know. Our office, I am the senior special assistant to the MD. What's your excuse today? With Jesus' joy, can you rise as we welcome Dr. Odering Law to give us the word. Let's honor the gift of God in the house. We'll have the slider details up as usual and I'll come back to join him for the Q&A session. So please take note of your questions as we go through. God bless you, sir. It's an honor. Thank you so much. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today. Um, the topic I've been given is to talk about practical and biblical principles for all-round wellness and health. Uh, I want to say that I've learned a lot Anna, from your pastor, Pastor Baweya. We met a few let me say a few months, maybe two years ago, and from there, I have learned a lot from him. And some of the things I do today is, is partly from what I've learned from him. So can we put our hands together for Pastor Bawe? Even this morning, she caught me stealing some <laughs> nuggets from him. And uh, I will still do that after service. So after service, please go home and allow me to steal some more from, from him. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's also very pleasing to me to see that most of the people here are my generation. <laughs> we are the generation that serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I hear you shout hallelujah? hallelujah? It doesn't matter what you do in life. It doesn't matter your training. It doesn't matter your intelligence. It doesn't matter the number of degrees you have. When you cross that line, the most important thing is what you have done with Jesus. It doesn't matter how much you earn. It doesn't matter how high you are. Maybe you're a member of the board. Maybe you're a professor. Maybe you scored the highest in your jam exam. <laughs> it doesn't matter in any way. The most important is what you have done with Jesus. And when you knew Jesus, which life did you touch? Who are those that you were able to bring up to the place where God wants them to be? And that's what God is going to judge you about. And I know we will not be found wanting in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, we give you every praise. We exalt your name. Holy Spirit, we ask that you come and lead us this morning. Speak through me, Lord, that every heart will receive that which you have proposed. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord. I'll be reading from the first book of Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 23. The Bible says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved brainless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus. Third John chapter 1 verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. I want you to know that above your spiritual prosperity, God also wants you to prosper physically. 
The Bible says, let the Lord be exalted who has a desire in the prosperity of his servants. So I want you to know that it is the desire of God for you to prosper. God has not just brought you into a place where he wants you to suffer. There's a way sometimes I greet people in the morning when I see them, I say, how are you? You say, fine. I say, you are enjoying, you know. And they say, no, 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 doctor, I'm not enjoying. So I say, okay, do you like me to greet you? You are suffering, you no. Know? Then they say, no, 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 I prefer the enjoyment. Definitely everybody prefers the enjoyment. I don't know if you prefer that I greet you, you are suffering, or when I see you in the morning. No. Everybody prefers the enjoyment. And sincerely, I will tell you that man was not made to suffer. God did not create man to be an animal of burden. The structure of man is the structure of a person that stands up, that stands above other things. Many times where animals don't attack man is because man is vertical and we appear to them to be taller and stronger. Even though some of these animals may weigh more than we do, some of them may even be able to wave us off with a single wave of their hands. But because God has made us to be beings to dominate, he has made us to be beings to express the kingdom of God on earth. And so as a result of that, God has given unto us the scriptures. And in the scriptures, he has given us certain practical principles for all-round wellness. The first verse I read here in 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says that may the God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray that God, your whole spirit and soul and body be prepared blameless. That means God wants your spirit your soul and your body to prosper. John here was telling the brethren, he says that, Behold, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. When you come to church, what you get is a message that helps you to tune your soul. It is a message that helps you to transform your soul. The Bible says that we should not be conformed to the world, but that we should be transformed by the renewal of our soul. And so God desires that you be renewed every day. The Bible says that they that appear before the Lord in Zion, they change from glory to glory. That is the purpose of God. That is the purpose of God for you that you change, that you move from glory to glory. However, many times we look at our physical body, our, the way we are, and we think that all that God is concerned about is our spiritual prosperity. We think that God is not really concerned about our health. We think that God is not really concerned about the things we do. So as a result, many of us, we play with our physical being. We play with our body. We play with our health. We overlook a lot of health things. And sometimes we even support ourselves with scripture. One of the most common scriptures that I see people talk about when they, when they look at exercise, they look at the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 9. And they say, but refuse, I'm reading particularly from verse 7 so that I'll be able to explain exactly what Paul was saying here. He said, but refuse profane and old wife's fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profited little. That is the only thing that I hear people, people who do not want to exercise. That is what they will quote. They say that the Bible says that bodily exercise profited little. So why waste your time in doing something that profits little? 
And he goes ahead to say that, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life that is now and that which is to come. My brethren, every time the Bible talks about a certain topic, it is because of emphasis. Now, what Paul was talking about here, what he was discussing with the people was the exercise in godliness. The topic of discussion that Paul was having, if you start from the first verse, and that's particularly where I started from verse 7, was he was teaching them about the exercise in godliness. He was not teaching about physical exercise. So that's why it says that exercise yourself in godliness. And because he was talking about exercise in godliness, he said that physical exercise has little relevance in godliness. And what it means is that if you want to develop yourself in godliness, there is a different direction that you take. If you want to develop yourself physically, there is a different direction that you take. And so as a result, it is not a cancellation of people taking care of their bodies. When you look at the recent happenings in our time, I'm sure most of us have not lived beyond a century, a hundred, so the first time we experience, if you are over a hundred years old here, okay, I, I thought as much, because only people over a hundred years old in this present world would have probably experienced two pandemics. The only pandemic that we experience is the coronavirus pandemic, and it was very, very revealing. Because the principles that were used by the World Health Organization to lead to a prevention of an increase in the spread of the pandemic were biblical principles. One of the principles was the principle of social distancing and the principle of isolation of the infected. Those are principles that come from the scripture. When you look at the book of Leviticus, you will find out that when people were infected, then it was leprosy. One of the first things they did for them was to create a social distancing. In fact, it is said that when a leper is coming, it, the lepers stay outside the camp. They don't stay within the camp. And if for any reason they have to come close to people, they were expected to ring a bell that a leper was coming. The principles of health are written more in the scripture than any other book you have read about health. Presently, if you go, you see a lot of people making money out of principles that they read in the scriptures, and the Christians themselves don't even know those principles. If you go to the social media now, they are all talking about intermittent fasting. That is, we are the owners. We are the owners of that fasting. Fasting is a principle that was introduced in scripture. And they tell you all the benefits. You know, sometimes I read it and I smile. And they sell a lot of books and tell you the, the, the advantages of intermittent fasting. How it detoxifies your system. How it allows your gastrointestinal tract to rest. You know, one of the most overworked organs in the body is the GI, the gastrointestinal tract, because we don't let it rest. Some people, their best exercise is opening the fridge. So they have developed biceps 
<laughs> not because they are doing any form of exercise, but because of the frequency with which they open the fridge and close it. But the principles of fasting are in the scriptures. If you read scripture very well, you will know it is important to live a healthy life. You will know it is important for you to take care of your body, not only your spirit. It is important that you take care because you see, the legal tender for functioning on this earth is the possession of a physical body. If you were a spirit and you walked into this place today, we will not talk with you. We will not carry any discussion with you. Even if we are able to see you, we will refuse to talk with you. Because that's necromancy for me to talk with the dead. I won't talk with you. You need your body. You need your body. Remember what was said commonly by John Wesley? He said that God gave me a message and he gave me a horse. He said, but I have killed the horse and I can no longer deliver the message. He was talking about his body. He was talking about the way that he used his body. Let me tell you, no matter the anointing you carry, if you do not take care of your body, the body will break down. No matter how much grace that is upon you, if you don't take care of your body, you will not be able to enjoy life the way God wants you to. In the book of Philippians chapter 2, 25 to 27, it says, Yes, I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after all of you and was full of heaviness because you had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick and nigh unto death. But God had mercy on me, on him, and on, on, not on him only, but also on me, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. This is Paul talking about Epaphroditus. Reputed to have walked himself into a level of sickness. You know, when you go on a message in those days, you do not have an airplane. If you look at the distance from where he was talking, where he had written the Philippians, the distance with which Infraditus had to travel, and most of the traveling was either done on foot, or if you had a horse, then you can use a horse. The other source, as of then, that we know was going by, by ship. This man had walked himself to a point where he was sick. And you would have asked me that why does God not, does Paul not just lay his hands on him and say be healed in the name of Jesus? If you walk your body to a point of no return, it becomes difficult for you just to receive grace to stand up. If you have not slept for three days, and that is the reason why you are weak, after they finish praying for you, after we finish praying for you, the first grace that you will receive will be the grace to sleep. Sometimes the kind of problems that people have can be corrected by rest, just by having adequate rest. You know, we used to walk 
in such ways that sometimes when we were in school, some of us also had to serve in the executive of the fellowship. So you had to combine a very hectic schedule as a student and equally difficult schedule as a Christian leader. And so many times you would walk round and round the clock. Sometimes we will finish executive meetings and everybody goes to sleep, but I cannot go to sleep because I have to go and study. Of course, I was a medical student. And I don't know the way they do medicine these days. I, I, I know it's a little better than the way they taught us. In those days, they just throw you into the anatomy room. You will make, you will look for the muscle yourself. <laughs> you will look for the muscle yourself. You will dissect and cut and cut, and then you will even argue, no, this is a nerve, this is a muscle. You will look for it yourself. We wasted a lot of time. I, I hope things get better now. But the fact is that you get into your walk and you walk and you do not rest. There's nothing as bad as someone continuously walking and not having time to give to rest. Because you break the rules that God himself has set. When God walked for six days, he, God Almighty, rested on the seventh day. Who are you? You want to walk 14 days without resting. There is a need in order for you to maintain a good health to have adequate rest. And you know, interestingly, for each age range, there are requirements of, of sleep. Babies sleep 12 to 16 hours. You, you will not try that. You know, that's not what I'm advising you to do because I don't know how you are going to work. And the more you go, the, as you get into your third and fourth decades, you probably might do less of sleep. But when you get into your sixth and seventh and eight decades of life, <laughs> you need a lot more sleep. You need to be able to sleep very well, to have adequate rest. That is something that God has established for us. And you also have to know the tendencies that we have individually. Now, I do not say that you should know such things for the reason of fear, but for the reason of care. I will give a simple example, systemic hypertension. Above the age of 55, listen to these statistics. Three out of every four individual of African American descent has elevated blood pressures. It is a risk. It is a predisposition. At a certain age in life, you must start to make sure that you closely follow your blood pressure. And that blood pressure many times has a close relationship to your body mass index. A lot of the pretty ladies here are looking very cute now, you know. Slim. Allow me with their figure eights. Is that what they call it? When you get to your fourth and fifth decade, you will start to experience some hormonal changes that will encourage weight gain. Yes. Ah, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Enjoy your slim clothes now. 
And there's what they normally call, you know, they call it, allow me, they call it dad board. That is daddy's body. That, my young brother, <laughs> you see his T-shirt with his muscles, and you like the way he's moving on the stage. By the time he gets to his fifth and sixth decade, he will begin to see something protruding underneath his shirt. <laughs> your weight gain. You need to pay attention to your weight. By simple things that you can start doing now, and you will gradually get used to, you can address some of these things so that you will not have problems that you don't need to have. Regular physical activity. God did not make us to be sedentary. Otherwise, he would have told Adam, sit down at my right hand <laughs> until I make the enemies thy footstool. It was only Jesus he told that. To Adam, he said, go there, go and walk, my brother, my son. So go and walk. He made the work for Adam before even Adam was made. And so probably you think it was a joke. Adam was one of the greatest taxonomists of our species. He named, do you know how many species we have of animals? He gave them names. And you never ask yourself, where was Adam when the serpent was talking to Eve? Where was he? Adam was at work, my brother. <laughs> he was walking. He wasn't sitting around. There is a certain percentage of physical activity that is required of you. You know, after the pandemic, some people, when they came out, we did not recognize them again. Some of them, they thought that the size of their door has changed. <laughs> they did not know that it was their own size that has changed, and it was a long time that they passed through that door. Because they spent their time sitting down. There is a certain percentage of physical activity that is required to live a healthy life. I don't want to take too much of our time this morning because I know we have time for questions and answers. And so, my brethren, God wants us to be fully well in every sphere of our lives as we take care of our spiritual lives so we take care of our soul and so we take care of our body there are a lot of people these days with mental health issues and if you look at the scripture you know that he has an answer to that the Bible says that do not be anxious about anything. Tell your neighbor, don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding. We guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. The things you feed your mind with will come back to you. The things you feed your mind with will come back to you. 
You see, your mind is, is a record. It's capable of recording things. And there are some things that are in your mind that even you don't know. And there's something that's, that's called the peering that eventually happens. When one thing is in your mind, it is seated in your mind, and then a similar thing is expressed outside. Your mind receives it, and your mind peers it. Music, for instance. If you were a fan of Akbala music, and since you became born again, you, you stopped listening to it you, you, because of the lyrics, even at the age of 90, if I play Akbala beside you, if you don't block your heart, the next thing is you will start tapping your legs. And if that tapping continues, you will stand up. And by the time you stand up, you will take your first step. And before you know what's happening, that thing, you know, it's so interesting that you probably have not listened to it in the past 25, 30 years. But yet it stimulates the same thing that it did to you years ago. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, and the Lord will bless you. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord another round of applause. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did we learn something online, on site? Did the Lord speak to us today? Hallelujah. The Lord wants us to be healthy. I, I took a few notes and it's just so true, so true. I like what the, the um, Wesley quote that you shared earlier. God gave him a message and gave him a horse. But he killed the horse and could no longer deliver the message. May that not be our story. May we take care of the horse. May we do what's right by our own selves, by our own bodies. Yesterday as I sat and pondered, the Holy Spirit told me this would be a healing service. And I believe that he is bringing us healing by knowledge today. Whatever the Lord says to you, please make the correction adjust and that healing you've been praying for you will receive amen. amen that's a word for somebody do you receive it oh i cannot hear you do you receive it praise the lord we have a number of questions that have come in already the slido details are up uh, folks online as well please send your comments in your questions in we'll try to take as many as possible hopefully we can get through a number of them today I was just thinking about the refrigerator exercise. Who is on that table? Refrigerator. Oh, Lord, help us. Amen. Okay, let's start with a few questions that are here. Um, how can I help a family relative dealing with pornography? Okay. Pornography. <laughs> And then there's also another question, what's the implication of masturbation in the health of an individual? So maybe you can take those two. Pornography, masturbation. Is there an impact on your health and what can you do? Okay, um, so th those are very common questions and I, I find out that unfortunately a lot of people are entangled in pornography. Mm. And um, first of all, like we said, what it does for you 
first of all, is you see, many people think that watching pornography in quotes is good for the marital relationship, right? They say, oh, how do we know this? How do we know that? I mean, when you watch it, then you can understand. It's actually very bad because it gives you a wrong thought about how exactly sex is supposed to be. It makes you have, especially for men, it makes you have the wrong impression extremely wrong impression about how women are. And so women are not to be used. They are not toys. They are not equipment. And that's how those features of things you see in pornography, that's how it portrays women and vice versa. And when you really get into marriage, you will find out that it's not like that. In fact, it's so far away from it. And it's, it's something you have to unlearn. You will have done yourself a great disfavor. Like I gave the example of, of having music. I mean, loving a type of music. You see, it's often better for you not to expose yourself to some things. Because those things that you expose yourself to, they stay in your mind for a long time. And we, we look at certain things. You know, the Bible says the word of God is sharper than any treasure sword, cutting asunder the, 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 the spirit. The word of God can help you create a new mind. But it's going to be more difficult the worse you have made your mind. So, when you spend your time watching pornography, you, for, you, you live in a world of your own. You live in an artificial world that is not true. And you come into relationships with that artificial thinking. And the implications are, there are so, just so many. If we, before we look at the spiritual implications, look at the physical implications. And you find yourself unable to maintain good relationships without going in that direction. Because the, the moment you see someone of the opposite sex, you already, in your mind, have you are looking at someone else mm. and what interests you is what you have been seeing mm. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the films you've been watching. Now, you know I'm a doctor. I try to use my words carefully. But if I was talking to my doctors, or my, I would really say the words the way it should be. But if I use the words, some of you are not used to them and you might not fully understand. So, but what it does, it, it, it puts you in an artificial situation. You begin to see the opposite sex as, as tools, as toys, tools for pleasure. You see them as toys. You don't look at them as a whole being because the whole essence of relationships and marriage is not only sex. Sorry, the second question masturbation. was... Masturbation. How do you overcome masturbation? Okay, so masturbation, again, is something... It's something, first of all, that <clears throat> medically, when people have spent a lot of time in masturbation, first, they are not able to sustain sexual relationships well because they are already used to unnaturally stimulating themselves. For instance, for a man who just, whichever way it's done, the aim of masturbation is just for the man to ejaculate. And so 
when he's in a real relationship and he has to express that, he begins to physically have ejaculation problems because that is the whole focus of what is in his head about having sexual relationships. So it damages your mind, it damages your physical relationships, and at the end of the day, when your mind is damaged and your physical relationships are not good, there are so many other problems that come after that. Marriage is at risk because you do not, you only go in, into the sexual act for your own satisfaction and you already have your own definition of what it means. So it's, it doesn't do you any, any, um, any favor at all. But like the Bible says that, it said, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you have to stop this conformation and start the transformation. Now, for many people, I tell you, you need counseling. What makes it very difficult to stop is because it is something that you do in secret. And you are alone. And when you finish, you come out, you justify yourself that after all, nobody saw you. So sometimes it's good when you have accountability individuals in your life that are counseling you and that can ask you directly about how you are doing with your transformation to what God wants you to. So yes, it's good and I know quite a number of churches have such support structures and you should get, you should get some help. You should get some help. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, and if anything is praiseworthy, meditate on these things i loved how you talked about transformation through the renewing of our minds and i'm really grateful to god for the folks who asked that question because the fact that you're asking the question tells me that you want a change you want you 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 agree that something is not right with what's going on that's a great first step the next step is to begin your transformation journey. Just reach out to the Lord and reach out like um, Pastor said. Reach out. Let's, let's support you. Let's have accountability partners that support your journey so that we all can remain strong in the Lord. Amen. 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 All right. More questions coming in. My son is 15 right now. I actually also had a question about sleep. And I think I can see... At least two questions here about sleep. So let's, let's talk about sleep. My son is 15 right now and he only gets four hours of sleep. He spends the rest studying. Is that wrong? Another question. Many men of God claim that they sleep four hours. I've also heard motivational speakers saying the rich sleep less than six hours. What will you say about this? Sleep. sleep. <coughs> okay. Um... Now, it's, it's very important for us to get adequate sleep. Each individual's sleep requirements varies. And also, sleep requirements vary by age. I would not be telling you the truth if I, if I say that, you see, for some part of my life, especially when I was studying, I, I slept very little. Um, sometimes I didn't sleep up to four hours in a day. Now, there are seasons and times 
There are certain seasons that you need to put in a lot of work. If you are preparing for an exam and you are sleeping 12 hours in a day, I don't know which exam, <laughs> I don't know which exam in that category you will be able to pass. So life is in seasons and times. There are times that you need to work hard. So such times you will put in less sleep. But there are other times that you can spend adequate time sleeping. The average they, they, they put usually is about six to eight hours in a day for an average adult. <laughs> you tell me about the billionaires, you tell me about the motivational speakers, you tell me that's what they say. That's what they say. On this side, as a doctor, I will tell you something else. We see many of these people and they have problems. If you don't sleep up to four hours in a day consistently, I think that is inadequate. I'm saying there are seasons in your life where you will need to put in additional work and not sleep so much. But once those seasons are up, you need to take adequate rest. Particularly, you need to listen to your body. I remember back in school, while preparing for, for some of our exams, I, you know, I, for about a whole week, I, I, I wouldn't sleep up to three hours in a day and I kept studying. So the, I, I went to the hall, the, it was like 11 a.m. and the lecturer I was talking, was teaching us. I, I could see him, but I didn't hear anything he was saying. <laughs> and he, he was, I was just blank. I was completely, I just picked up my books, went back, it was around probably two or three when I got back to the room and I slept. I slept till the following morning. When I woke up, I could hear everybody clearly. <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes you, you may need to work harder. Yes, it's, it's understood, but you also have to listen to your body. You have to take adequate, you know, it's a balance. You have to sleep well. You have to exercise, physical exercise. You have to give time to all these things. So you need to strike a balance. Consistently living a life where you don't sleep at all is not a good norm. It's not a good focus. It's not what you should, you should, you should plan to, to, to be. So for me now, I try my best to get five to six hours sleep every day. Every day. I still resume in the past 27 years, I still resume at work at about the same time. I resume. I, one of my friend's colleague called me just a few days ago and said, ah, I, I hope I didn't wake you up. I said, no, I'm at work. I said, wow, you know what you will do for me? When next you get to work, call me so that I can wake up from my bed. <laughs> because he, at such times, he's sleeping. Why I say individuals differ? Some people are early risers. Some people are late sleepers. So interestingly, I am an early riser. My wife, uh, 12 midnight, she still wants to be talking. She's, and interestingly, my children have taken after her. So because I wake up early and I also have an early routine, I have to study, pray, 
an exercise before I go home. So I, I wake up very early. So I'm always the one bowing out of late night discussions to go and rest. So people differ, but you should look at your own, your own uh, nature and try and put all those things around it so that it fits well. But it's my own personal opinion. I think sleeping less than four hours in a day is not healthy. Forget about all these stories of billionaires who don't sleep and all this. Yes, maybe some of them are like that. But I will not sell my health for making billions. Yes. I wouldn't. Did you hear that? I will not sell my health for making billions. What's, what's the value of your life? How much would you trade for waking up tomorrow? 10 million? 20? 50? 100? What would you give in exchange? So I think that's really powerful. Two comments from me. In fact, as you were speaking, it dropped in my heart that there's somebody in church today, what they need is sleep. That, that challenge you're going through in your body, God is speaking expressly to you, go and sleep. When you get home today, switch off Instagram, switch off um, Facebook, Twitter, DSTV, Netflix, what are the other things? Ma? She said tread. Trend? Trend. Oh, trend. Is it trend oh, trend, said? that's new. <laughs> Switch it all off. You know, shut down and sleep. That is the key to your healing. Is someone receiving it? Please sleep. Go home. It's very nice weather for sleeping today. Amen. The Bible says he gives his beloved what? He gives his beloved sleep. If you're struggling to sleep, maybe insomnia, may the Lord give you sleep today. Amen. Someone said lack of sleep is as bad as being intoxicated. I've heard that. I don't know if that's a medical fact. But that not sleeping is as bad as being intoxicated. Right? Please let's sleep. Can you nudge someone and say, please sleep? Get enough rest. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, we still have a few questions here. Um, how does white noise, listening to the sound of water or walking barefooted on the beach or looking at ocean waves, help our minds? I know white noise helped when my, my babies were younger, when we were crying, if, if you just put on white noise. In fact, even the noise of um, Hoover, vacuum cleaner would help a child calm down. I don't know the secret or the science of it, but it worked for that one that's very tall now looking at me in the congregation. So, <laughs> is, is, is there some medical support for this? White noise, ocean waves? So, I'm not, I'm not very sure about the medical implications for, for those types of sound. I know, like you've rightly said now, that there are many... Um, people who get calm yes. when they do the things she's mentioned. Um, but maybe we talk to a psychologist or a psychiatrist who can give us better insight into it. Um, I know that happens. I know it's some form of therapy right. we give for people, but I'm not very sure why exactly it does. Okay. Uh, praise the Lord. Now, I, th this part I really want to talk about because when you were talking about people who start getting fat for no reason, I'm in that WhatsApp group. <laughs> You're laughing at me. Be nice. <laughs> I'm in that WhatsApp group. Oh, you know, I think I try not to overeat. You know, I try to do, I'm not great with exercise. I need to do better. But I find myself, I've, I've gained a dress size in the last 12 months. So the most painful part, you know how you have some dresses you really like? And those dresses don't like you anymore? Story of my life. Can anybody relate? Only sisters, brothers, you are the same size. 
Yes, so. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's talk about two things, fasting and what we can eat. Um, fasting, you talked about intermittent fasting. Is fasting for prolonged periods healthy? One. And then what should we eat, especially when you get to the fourth floor, the fifth floor? You know, what should we eat to maintain our health? Does it even matter what we eat? Okay. Um, yeah, it does matter what we eat because basically what, what, what we eat is, is who we are. Mm. That's, that's what gets metabolized and that's what does some changes for us. Now, putting on weight is, it's, is a balance between what you consume in terms of calories mm -hmm. and then what you burn in terms of calories. Mm -hmm. So then there are a whole lot of, it's a multifactorial thing. It's not only what you eat. So you have also issues that have to do with the hormonal balance. Um, you also have issues that have to do with your genetic predisposition. Um, a lot of us don't, don't um, understand that, but it, it's a whole lot of things put together. It's not only one thing. For instance, if you look at Africans, um, people of African descent, the way we, we put on fat, adipose tissue, is, is different. Um, in Africa, if you look at an African, the males, anterior abdomen, their abdomen, the ladies around their hips. So all these things, those are the African genetic predisposition. And there's what we call the BMI, I'm sure you know, body mass index. And a lot of people say now that it's not the full, it's not a full reflection of um, an indication towards diseases. Mm -hmm. But right now, even with its flaws, it's still one of the best things we have uh, to measure um, how much weight a person is putting on. So we, look, those are the predispositions. Then let, let's talk of the hormonal influences. When we are younger, we have a lot of active hormones, let me call that, um, for males androgens. And um, a man wakes up and he feels like playing football. At 16, 17, mm. you could run all over the fields. But even if you are um, Lionel Messi, by the time you are 40, mm. it's becoming more difficult for you because you don't have that amount of hormonal support you had as an 18-year-old. And so because of that, those hormonal changes, we actually move less. So it's part of what contributes to people having the so-called middle-age spread. And 40, 44 and above, as you begin to change your hormones, you actually move less. And so because you move less, you, you tend to keep more of the calories you don't burn. It's also easier for younger people because they move more and they have those active hormones that when they exercise, they easily lose weight. So the problem from the fourth floor, as you say, upward is not only that you move less, it's also that it becomes more difficult to lose weight. Um, so one of the things is really embrace it, it's life. That, that's, that's the first thing. You don't go around the world hating yourself. That, that's something you, you wouldn't enjoy life. Then address it. You ask about what we eat. And so normally the advice is to reduce quantity and to have preference for um, things that are nutrients rather than things that are just calories. 
so to give preference for nutrients and not not calories and that's even the way you cook your food a lot of it has to change sometimes we want to take vegetable and we boil it and boil it and boil it and boil it and boil it till we've killed everything inside so there, there are so many modifications that one can make to the diet that will help you um, not to to um, to put on much weight. Notice my words: not to put on much, much weight. weight, because it it's almost you will not weigh 60 kg at the age of 16, and still weigh 60 kg at the age of 66. Um, so it's once it's not it's not out it's not out of the the world the amount of of things you do once it's not out of the world then you just cope with it live a healthy life i keep saying exercise physical exercise adequate rest pay attention to the predispositions around you a, lo a lot of people you know, um, your, your dad was obese and overweight. All your siblings are obese and overweight. It's a predisposition for you. You should pay attention to it. It's not that uh, it's not my portion. No. You should pay attention to it. And then you, it should make you watch what you eat and make you do all those um, other things. You, you asked one question. Fasting. Fasting, okay. Long-term so, fasting, long is it Long-term fasting. Now, it's very interesting because basically that principle of fasting comes from scriptures. Yes. Now, there are different ways fasting is done. Overall classification in scripture you have partial and full fasting. Now, even the full fasting is not the way you, you have to look at how, you know, Jesus, the Bible says that after Jesus fasted 40 days, then he hungered. That means he was hungry, but he was not thirsty because he was drinking water. Aha. Some people want to fast 40 days without water or food. I don't know for that. It's going to put you in a lot of problems. And also you have to realize that even after you've not eaten for such number of days, there's a way you gradually break. Like if you have a, a surgery, there's a way you gradually, if you've not eaten for some time, there's a way you gradually break it. So full, full fasting. Partial fasting, you have examples of Daniel and, and how he did um, in, in Babylon and everything. So first of all, I believe that regular fasting, this is my own opinion, regular fasting is good for your health. That's what I believe, and that is what I also believe is scriptural. If you remember that Pharisee yes. and that sinner, he said, I'm not like that, um, that sinner across the, the, the room. I give tithes of everything that I, that I earn. I fast two times a week. Mm -hmm. So I think that it is good for you to fast often. Now, if you are now going to go on a prolonged fast for certain reasons, first of all, fasting doesn't bend God. Mm. It is you. Mm. But fasting is good for you so that you can be in tune with God. Yes. Right. So, sometimes you decide to, you have to plan it. You have to structure it. And there are so many books. I remember God's Chosen Fast. Um, there are so many books that actually 
will help you to do it the right scriptural way. Because if you don't manage it well, it can be very costly for you and you can die. Mm. I know some people will know about the social influencer, I think from the East, who starts to lose, was it 40 or 50 kg in a month and she died. You know, so it's something you have to plan and, 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 uh, and do well. Uh, don't forget, John the Baptist was eating honey uh, uh, in the desert. He wasn't, he had some form of food he was eating yeah. for years. It's not that I just went to the wilderness. I was not eating any food till he grew up. So I think, yes, it's good to have periods of prolonged fast, but I also suggest that it should be planned. You should educate yourself. Then you will be able to do it well. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, let, let us pray together. So if you could, please just pray over everyone. I think today I, I feel a little better because I said I should embrace my new size. <laughs> but more importantly, I'm leaving this place with some nuggets. Rest. Rest rest, exercise, take care of your body. God wants your physical body to be healthy. Don't kill the horse. I'm living with that. I don't know what the Lord spoke to you about today, but I pray that his word will be effective in your life and that you will have a harvest because you're putting the word to use. Could you pray over all of us, sir? Our Father, we thank you for this time we've spent to understand your word the more. We pray that you will enlighten our hearts with the light of your words in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, give us understanding beyond what we have heard today. Enlighten every word in our heart and help us to be able to do as you have instructed us to do. That your name may be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, we'll take the announcements very quickly. As we take the announcements, please package your offerings and give to the Lord. Um, your love gift because we love him that's the reason we give all of the details are on the screen behind me if you'd like to transfer your offering um, we have pos points at the back and we have envelopes on your seats if you'd like to give a cash offering we take our offerings as we take the announcements god bless you <laughs>